Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Flectus channel. The U-2 spy plane is a single-jet engine, high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. Also known as the Dragon Lady, this aircraft can gather surveillance and send intelligence data back to the control room in real time. Moreover, it can loiter over the target location for several hours and is often described as a glider due to its flight characteristics. The U-2 planes have taken part in the post-Cold War conflicts like Afghanistan and Iraq and supported several NATO operations. Over the years, it has also been used for unique purposes, like satellite calibration, electronic sensor research, and scientific research. The U-2's maintenance process makes it clear just how unique the design of this aircraft really is. The maintenance teams can separate the long cylindrical fuselage, providing them easy access to both the engine compartment and the engine. In order to maintain the high altitude flight for several hours, the U-2's weight was kept to a minimum. Hence, the aircraft's electrical and other system components are easily accessible to the maintenance teams. Any aircraft that has been in operation for more than 70 years and has served in multiple war zones would surely require a significant amount of maintenance. Due to their high altitude flight capability, the U-2 aircraft are also subjected to icing and various other hazards that aren't normally seen on planes with lower operational ceilings. As very few aircraft operate in such a way, the U-2 maintenance procedure requires utmost diligence by the maintenance teams. The scheduled maintenance occurs at every 1,000 flight hours and takes around 12 days to complete. To ensure every part of the aircraft receives proper attention, each component has its maintenance team assigned to it. The personnel specialized in inspecting and repairing certain systems would only work on them. Sometimes, maintenance is performed at different times to ensure there are minimal distractions and zero interruptions. The U-2 is equipped with a single GE F-118-101 engine, which is tested at the engine shop located at the Whitman Air Force Base. The tests are usually conducted after the engine has been repaired or overhauled. This allows the crew to learn the status and the operational capacity of the engine. The U-2 can attain high altitude flight and constantly fly at 70,000 feet. While in the air, the pilot visualizes a unique view of the Earth's curve. However, this altitude is above Armstrong's line, where water boils at body temperature and life is unsustainable. Therefore, the U-2 pilots must wear a special spacesuit, somewhat like what astronauts wear during shuttle missions.
Without this suit, the water in the pilot's body would escape as a gas, ultimately causing damage to tissues blocking the blood flow. The pilots are helped by fellow personnel to wear this 70-pound spacesuit. Once the pilots are suited up, they are moved to a big reclining chair and hooked up to oxygen and cooling air. The pilots cannot walk up the ladder and into the cockpit due to the weight of the suit, which is why fellow personnel help them get seated in the cockpit. The heavy suit can cause both physical and psychological unrest for the pilots. They are required to fly the U-2 for as long as 12 hours while wearing that suit. Usually, the pilots don't feel much discomfort while performing the mission. But in the past, some pilots have reported feeling an intense strain after landing. Nice job, welcome back. The purpose behind the Sioux is to protect them from the negative effects of high altitudes. It's like every single part of the Sioux is specifically made to protect them from for when they go up in altitude. Instead of a three-wheeled landing gear, the U-2 was equipped with only two landing gears, each placed in the plane's center like a bicycle's wheels. This helped reduce critical pounds off the aircraft's weight, helping it achieve the desired altitude. The interesting thing is when the U-2 is about to take off, it is equipped with two additional wheels, one on each wing. However, they are dropped as soon as the plane is in the air, which helps it ascend to the required altitude. The landing of the U-2 spy plane is kind of like a controlled crash. The pilot descends and slows the plane down until it stalls, dropping onto the runway. The entire landing procedure is guided and overlooked by the crew inside a car racing alongside the aircraft. In addition to the U-2, the U.S. Air Force uses the Boeing E-3 Sentry for intelligence gathering. It has a strange radar dome on top, which allows it to serve as an airborne warning and control system, AWACS, provide reconnaissance, and facilitate communication in the skies. In March 1977, the U.S. Air Force received the first E-3, and since then, it has provided both offensive and defensive capabilities. The E-3 is 152 feet long and features a wingspan of about 145 feet. 
Additionally, it carries advanced systems to cater to the need for top-class reconnaissance in hostile environments. The E3 Sentry can be scrambled at a moment's notice. Once notified, the crews ensure the aircraft is ready for flight. They inspect the landing gears, fluid levels, electrical systems, and basic avionics before takeoff. Once the ground crews give a green signal for takeoff, the pilots enter the cockpit, start the engines, taxi the aircraft towards the runway, and finally take off. The E-3 can fly for more than eight hours. But if the mission profile necessitates it to stay in the air for a longer time, a fuel tanker can be used to extend its flight time. The E-3 is indeed a remarkable aircraft in terms of speed, altitude, and maneuverability. It carries a radar thousands of feet into the air and provides detailed information on enemy threats and weather conditions. This kind of information not only proves invaluable in a war zone, but also helps during routine troop movement. The E-3 Sentry was derived from the airframe of a Boeing 707 airliner. But there exists an aircraft that was specially designed for airborne early warning, AEW. The E-2 is an all-weather, carrier-capable, twin-turboprop aircraft developed during the late 1950s and early 1960s for the United States Navy to replace the earlier piston-engine E-1 Tracer. Over the years, the aircraft's performance was upgraded with the E-2B and E-2C versions. Most changes were made to the radar and radio communications. The fourth major version of the Hawkeye is the E-2D, which first flew in 2007. Significant changes to this variant of the E-2 include the replacement of the radar system, the communication suite, and the mission computer along with the incorporation of an all-glass cockpit. The radar upgrade replaces the previous E-2C mechanical scan radar with a radar array, having both mechanical and electronic scan capabilities. This upgrade enhances the Hawkeye's literal, overland, clutter management, and surveillance capabilities. The E-2D can operate from both the land and the aircraft carrier and perform various missions, including missile sensing and early warning, battlefield management, command and control, and tracking of strike warfare assets. E-2Ds are often launched from an aircraft carrier along with multiple fighter jets, such as FA-18s. However, operating them from aircraft carriers presents unique challenges and demands precise coordination. Extremely skilled pilots and deck crews use catapults to launch both the E-2D and the FA-18s. Once in the air, the E-2D constantly provides reconnaissance to the fighter jets on the battlefield and provides them with a competitive edge to eliminate hostile threats. Mm -hmm. 
After completing the mission, the aircraft uses arresting wires to land on the carrier's flight deck swiftly. Surveillance aircraft are vital to modern defense, each serving its unique role. The U-2 excels in high-altitude reconnaissance, while the E-3 Sentry provides essential early warning and airspace management. On the maritime front, the E-2D enhances command and control and naval operations. Together, these land and sea-based systems ensure comprehensive situational awareness and strategic advantage, enabling the United States military to effectively monitor and respond to evolving threats across diverse environments. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.